Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. <sighs> X-Files Season 4 finale leaves us with this cliffhanger, man, that, that Agent Fox Motor is dead. With a gunshot to the back of the head, or the front of the head, or through the mouth, or whatever, but he's dead. It's, man, I don't understand, man. I don't understand what happened, like, and where the hell was Scully, man? Like, like... This whole entire season, man, has been just really upsetting, man. Like, um, oh, gosh, man. Let me try to get through this review. So Agent Scully, she has this form of uh, cancer that's inside of her that, that keeps coming back. Um, the smoker, the smoking man, the cancer man, he won't, he won't fix it. He says he's going to fix it, but he won't fix it. She's bleeding all the time out of the nose. She's sick. And, and Motor is out there chasing, you know, pipe dreams. While the entire, it seems like the whole entire world is falling apart, man. You have, um, you have smallpox bees. You have, um, uh, um, shapeshifters. You have, you have dudes that can turn invisible, like, like almost something out of the Terminator or something. Um, you have people that are coming back from the dead. There's, a, there's, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in this, um, this this uh this season man this is season four my favorite okay well not really my favorite favorite but I I have a couple of them my one of my favorite episodes is unrequited is episode number sixteen the next one is small potatoes I'm gonna read you this one man the true birth father of small town babies born with alien tales turns out to be a chameleon-like man capable of impersonating anyone, including Motor. So, on uh, Small Potatoes, man, Motor actually, you know, he gets he gets captured by this, this chameleon-like man, okay? And the guy hides him towards the end of the episode. Um, this guy was like, uh, how do you want to say? He was unpopular in high school. Uh, kind of like a nerdy, geeky guy. Anyway, he takes Motor's skin, wears it, and not like takes his actual skin, but he just wears his skin. He's like he's like the complete opposite of Fox Motor. It's like a Freaky Friday, Bizarro Superman scenario, and <laughs> he goes he goes to Scully's apartment, brings a bottle of wine, you know, and she lets him in because it looks like it looks like you know Spooky Motor man. She she lets him in. They sit down. She um. She, you know, opens up the wine and then they start talking. It was weird because he said, you know, Scully, you know, it's been, it's been a while and we haven't really talked. Can we talk? And then she's like, oh, sure, Motor. And then she sits down, man. And like, I think that Scully really likes Motor. I'm telling you, they really think that. And I think that, you know, Scully and Motor, I think there's a connection between them. And, and, and I think as the longer that you watch this show, the more... You want them to actually uh, work out, man, because it's a really, really good relationship, really good, you know, dynamic for the characters, and they just have a really good chemistry, man. So anyway, <laughs> they drink the wine, man. Scully's like drunk. You can tell she's drunk. Motor, he's, I don't know if he's drunk because I don't think the guy can get drunk, but he keeps pouring her wine. He's drinking wine too, but maybe, maybe he is a drunk, but he's not as drunk as her. She's definitely drunk, man. And so he leans in for a kiss. All of a sudden, the door, as soon as their mouths are about to, to connect, the door breaks open, and it's the real Fox Motor. And he's looking like, Scully, really? Like, <laughs> you, you didn't know it was me? And, and after that, you know, the episode ends and stuff. Um, I think they could have went a little bit further with that, but that was definitely my favorite one, man. Um, my second one was uh, Zero Sum. It was just because they had a lot of bees, man, and I'm terrified of bees, and I was able to watch that. And then, you know, it was pretty cool after that. Um, this, uh, let me see, uh, the other one is way up at the top, and this one was like something out of, how do you want to say it, out of, uh, Sling Blade, it's called Home, alright, and then here it is, it says, uh, in a small, otherwise peaceful town, the agents investigate the death of an infant with disturbing birth defects, and the trail of clues leads to a clan of inbred genetic mutants. If you ever watched Sling Blade, if you ever watched, um, how do you want to say it, uh, House, House of a Thousand Corpse, 
Um, if you ever watched, uh, um, what's that other one? Anything Rob Zombie, I guess you can say, man. Especially the, the, uh, the, the um, Jason remake that he did. I think it was Jason. Yeah, it was Jason. Was it Jason or Mike Myers? No, Mike Myers. Was it Mike Myers? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, I think Halloween. Yeah, the Halloween remake. There you go. So, um, it's just like that mixed with a little bit of, you know, X-Files. And they, uh, they go to this, this small town. Obviously, the sheriff doesn't want them in there. The sheriff is a dude that played, I'm trying to get in, I mean, he's almost like Phil Morris, but he's not. It's, it's, it's the, it's the, how do you want to say it? It's, it's the same. He looks, he looks just like Phil Morris, but he's not. And, um, I forgot his name. He's on everything. He was on Martin. He was on, uh, in living color. Um, he was on a lot of the 90s shows, man. As soon as you see him, you're going to recognize his face. But anyway, they, uh, they go there and, um, and start investigating the town. And then you, you first, you start seeing you know, the, these, this, this, this house that's kind of abandoned looking, but there's people actually occupying it. And it's a whole bunch of, um, kids, it looks like, but they're, but they're, they're giant, deformed looking kids, man. And, um, the sheriff warns, uh, Fox and, uh, Scully to stay away from there. Anyway, long story short, Fox and Motor, uh, Fox and Motor, they do not, um, I said Fox and Motor, Fox and, uh, Motor and Scully, they don't stay away from there, okay? And what ends up happening is that, <laughs> They they go inside there to investigate. They knock on the door first. Nobody answers. They go inside, you know, because they just do that, you know. Um, and then they use that excuse, you know, oh, I saw something inside. So, therefore, they have, you know, the right to search your house, um, which the government does a lot. Um, for, for all of the, you know, good stuff that they do in the X-Files, there are some pretty messed up stuff that they do with the law, man. Just to kind of show you how police can work. So, make sure you have all your, you know, windows locked up and boarded and stuff. But, anyway... Um, they go inside, man, all of a sudden they get attacked by these, um, these kids, they go upstairs and they hear like this noise and stuff. They thought somebody was hiding at the bed. They pull the bed up. It's the mother of the kids and she's, she has no arms. Well, yeah, she, well, she has one arm. No, uh, let me see. It's her, it's her right arm. Yeah. I think it's her right arm or her left arm. I'm pretty sure it's her right arm. She has one, one, one arm. All her um, legs are gone. Duh, both of her legs, all of her legs, but yeah, that one's, that one's gone, she's, li she's living underneath the bed, and she's living on this, um, it's, it's like an auto, I mean, how do you want to say it, it's like an auto shop, like a body shop, you know, like the little buggy that you go underneath the cars on, if you've ever been to like the, if you've ever been in the army, you know what I'm saying, where they had a whole bunch of homemade, um, you know, Jerry rig ones, you know, that you can make, especially down range and you, you, you lay on your back and then you can roll around these little things, man. That's what she was living on. And it turns out that, that the, the reason why, um, that the kids eat, you know, each generation that they've continued to go on and, and live in that house is because they've been having, uh, Oedipus Rex with their mother. Okay. So, uh, if you understand what I'm talking about, yeah, yeah, think about that for a second, all right? And I'm not even going to say what's going on in there, but that's what the, that's what's been happening. Generation to generation have been keeping the, I don't know, the bloodline going, you know, all because of the mother, man. Um, long story short, man, they end up dying. Um, it was it was a crazy, crazy uh, um, scene. And um, I don't know, it was uh, it was something that, that was so believable in that, in, in that uh, episode, Home, because... You know, stuff like that happens, man. You know, all across America, it literally happens. There's places right now that probably have a mother that's being, you know, held not against her will, but somewhat, I guess, against her will. So she won't leave, but she's not going to, uh, how do you want to say, call the authorities because she doesn't want to, you know, get her babies in trouble. And, and, and they're making more babies, you know. It's just some sick, twisted stuff that's going on, man. Um... Hair Invoke, I think, is definitely my, uh, my, my, um, one of my, one of my first ones, because it has, the, our favorite ones, because they have this alien bounty hunter, so, I, I don't know, this, this, this season was really, really good, this one was one that I can actually, like, sit down and not even really watch, but just listen to, it was very peaceful on the ears, man, and I think the X-Files, it just does a good job of that, man, I'm heading to season five now, and, um, that's it, man, we're, we're out of here, um, hopefully, man, um, motors a lot because this is stupid well i understand and and if he did die what's going to happen how's it going to change the story this is horrible but uh we'll see what happens right here